Hi guys and welcome to the Easy Promotions YouTube channel. My name is Paul and here is the top Amazon FBA seller news for the week commencing 25th of November 2019. If you've missed any of the Amazon news roundups this month, be sure to check out our playlist where we have conveniently placed them one after another so you can watch them all at your leisure. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on all the Amazon seller news. We have a weekly news roundup and videos throughout the week where we go deeper into some of the stories we cover. Some of this week's news stories include Amazon's new social media platform for sellers and new PPC tools for Seller Central, so make sure you get to the end of the video to hear about these new changes for Amazon sellers. Number 4. Nike Leaves Amazon Back in 2017, Nike began a trial with Amazon to sell their sportswear products on the Amazon FBA platform. Seems to make sense, right? A big seller in sportswear and the biggest online retailer married up to make each other even more money. Well, it all seems like it's ending in a messy divorce. Nike is starting a massive reboot of their retail strategy and Amazon are not a part of the plan. Nike also has a new head with some very specific links to a big Amazon competitor. Nike's new CEO, John Donahoe, or just so happens to be the ex-CEO of eBay. On the surface, Nike is saying that Amazon corrodes the relationship between customers and brands. Nike has also suggested they are upset with the unauthorised sellers on Amazon platform. I guess even the big brands have issues with hijackers. Insiders have leaked that Nike is working with authorised third-party sellers to continue selling on the Amazon platform, presumably allowing them access to Nike's brand registry on Amazon to then police the issue of unauthorised sellers themselves. In a statement on the matter, this is what Nike had to say. As part of Nike's focus on elevating consumer experiences through a more direct personal relationship, we have made the decision to complete our current pilot with Amazon Retail. We will continue to invest in strong distinctive partnerships for Nike with other retailers and platforms to seamlessly serve our consumers globally. Nike is continuing its relationship with Amazon in other ways as they are going to continue using Amazon's web services which is the biggest cloud computing service in the world. The real question is, is this just the start of other big brands leaving the platform? Many sellers are worried about the overwhelming control Amazon has on them and for the big brands it's easy for them to get out and still dominate in their selected markets. With the Amazon SBA program for FBA sellers, bigger brands could be seriously considering their relationship with Amazon. What do you think though? Is Amazon going to start losing big brands and just be a Chinese plastic crap shop or will big brands still insist on selling on the biggest e-commerce market in the world? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 3. New search terms, history tabs and more in Seller Central Campaign Manager. Some new tools have popped up in Seller Central over the past couple of weeks. If you have not seen the new request review button be sure to check out our video on how to use it and how it works. But this week reveals even more features that Amazon is offering up to sellers. Some new features have been added to the campaign manager to make PPC a little easier. The first one of these changes is a change to suggested keywords which has always been a bit naff. It's now also called related keywords. The new change brings you a nice little interface with suggested keywords that you can filter out by exact, phrase or broad matches and can easily add to your campaign with a default suggested or custom bid. It's actually a welcome change and on the surface it seems to work pretty well. The second addition is a new search terms tab. This seems to be a simplification of the search terms report that could always be a bit messy. The new tab shows you search terms customers are searching for, along with the relevant keywords, clicks and other normal information available such as ACOS and SPEND. This is easy to use and more importantly quick to use. It may be missing some of the more detailed information from the search terms report, but for smaller sellers everything is here that is needed. The final addition is the history tab. This one again is small but a welcomed addition. It lets you know all the changes that you've made to your campaign and you can match them up to the sales ACOS and reach in the bar chart at the top. What do you think of these new additions? Are they helpful? Will you be using them? Let me know in the comments below. Before we continue to a potential new big focus for Amazon sellers, be sure to like and subscribe to keep up to date with all the Amazon seller news. It's really easy, just click the icon in the bottom right corner for a quick subscribe and continue watching the video. Number 2. Amazon's new social media platform, Amazon Posts. So some are reporting this as a new social media platform, but that may be a little bit exaggerated. 
is more likely to end up as a new customer browsing experience. Amazon Posts has been launched in the US market and allows brand registered sellers to create posts similar to social media posts into a feed for customers to browse. The posts are also going to show up in listings, a related post feed for buyers and the category feed. Brand owners will also get access to analytics on their posts, just like Facebook ads, showing customer interaction with their posts along with clicks and sales. This is all free for the moment and no sign of sponsored post feature. But if this gets popular, rest assured you'll most likely be paying to get those posts to the top of the feed in the future. So is this going to be big with customers? Maybe not, but it could be good for those shoppers who like to have a browse and find new products they never knew they needed. US sellers who are brand registered can sign up to the new Posts beta now and start taking advantage of this new feature. For those wanting to sign up or learn more about Amazon's Posts, there's a link in the description to this video. Number 1. Amazon's using aggregated data to create their own products. Amazon has long been under suspicion of using their platform in an unfair manner creating a monopoly against third party sellers. The argument is that if Amazon is going to encourage third party sellers to use their platform then they should be on a level playing field. There has always been a deep conspiracy theory amongst sellers that Amazon uses seller data and then promotes their own branded products. Well, if you're in the I told you so camp, or the I can't believe they would ever do that camp, it's still a shame to hear that it's actually true and Amazon has admitted it. Be safe in the knowledge though, that Amazon doesn't just pick out specific data from certain sellers, it uses aggregated data. So that means they use everybody's data to create their own products and then sell to the consumers pushing out third party sellers. This was revealed in the US Congress in an investigation into unfair practices from big tech firms. Now some might say that it's Amazon's platform and they have a right to do this, but anti-monopoly laws in many countries do go against this argument. The argument against Amazon in this case is that they are such a big force that many sellers rely on Amazon as their primary selling channel, and there is nothing nearly as big as Amazon. So when Amazon uses the data from these hardworking sellers and undercuts them on the platform that they rely on, the governments around the world will start to pay attention. In a statement attempting to defend themselves, Amazon had this to say on the matter with a certain unashamed tone. Just like other stores, Amazon uses public and aggregated data from its stores to identify categories and products with high customer demand over a given time period. Data that is aggregated across all third party sellers and Amazon's third party sales and is therefore not specific to an individual seller. It includes data such as aggregated sales reports at a product category level. So in Amazon's eyes they are doing nothing wrong by taking the data from competitors to then use to their advantage. What do you think though? Is Amazon in the wrong here or is it just the way it goes? Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this story and all the other stories we've covered today. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you subscribe and keep up to date with all the Amazon seller news and to be sure to look out for the videos in the week to learn more about some of the stories we cover. Check out these great videos on your screen right now for more from Easy Promotions.